There we are. That music, of course, means that we need to discuss in my Sunday sermon a big issue of the day. Do you remember those three words that were spouted by politicians, Brexiteers, take back control? Do you remember that? Take back control of our laws, take back control of our money, and take back control of our borders. Take back control control. And so what have we seen this week? Well, I'll be talking my second Sunday term about how it turns out we're not taking back control of our money. Someone else has taken control of that. But this first sermon of the day is about borders, because this was the week when we learned that the net lawful migration number into the United Kingdom to June 2022 was a total of 504,000 people. 504,000 people. That's lawful. That excludes the illegal immigration that we've talked about. And the big question, of course, is, well, how's that taking back control? How's that helping the United Kingdom? Where are these people going to live? When we all know there's an affordable housing crisis, our young people can't get homes themselves. All our politicians are saying we need more homes for our young people, more affordable housing. Well, hang on. If you allow another 504,000 net, if that's the real figure, to come in legally, where are they going to live? Who's going to look after them when they're sick? Oh, the GP. Well, hang on, we haven't got enough GPs for ourselves, let alone another half a million. What about if they get toothache? The dentists. You can't get on an NHS dentist waiting list at the moment. But don't worry, we'll open our borders, that's fine. What about school places? Where are the children going to go to school? And let's remember... There are still over 5.2 million people, people living in this country, talented people on out of work benefits, which I think is the greatest tragedy and the greatest scandal that faces us. And yet, also this week, we had the big multinational business lobbying group, yes, them of the CBI, which stands for the Confederation for British Industry, even though there's not much British industry left within their ranks. No, they say 504,000 is not enough. We need more. They want more and more. And yes, the, bo- the boss, Lord Wilson of Next PLC, who I've asked on this show, who's politely declined my invitations, he also wants more so that he can continue to make £800 million profits every single year, even though he's actually offering for his warehouse workers about a 20% discount to some of his competitors. Well, it's not surprising you can't find the workers. If you don't offer the right salary, an attractive salary, that's your problem. It's not the country's problem, for heaven's sake. Literally, under the current points-based system that was supposed to be for skilled workers... It's actually open borders, and I will explain why. First of all, student visas. Student visas, you come here to study a degree, and that's all well and good, and we've got some fine and wonderful universities offering good degrees. There's plenty that are offering pretty ropey degrees, but nevertheless, let's be optimistic, shall we? So you can come here for a degree. Why does that give you the right to bring, frankly, as many family members as you want alongside you to help you study the degree? You can't do that if a British person wants to go and study in France or Germany or Australia or the Netherlands or something. So why do we allow it? And then once you've done your graduate degree and you've hopefully passed with a splendid result, you can stay for two years working and that's all well and good, fine. And then, of course, you can apply for a skilled worker visa. So you're then here basically forever. So you see what's going on here. We've literally got, we haven't got a a proper points-based system that reflects the skills, the shortages we genuinely need to help our economy. We have an open border system. And this is remarkable. Is it a coincidence that since essentially freedom of movement was opened to the Eastern European nations back in 2004, is it a coincidence that since then, for about 15 years, we had almost zero real wage growth? in the United Kingdom. And is it a coincidence that in that same period, productivity collapsed in the UK? Whereas in the 1990s, before freedom of movement, we had average real wage growth of 2.8% per annum. 
For ease of maths, let's call that 30% in a decade. You can see the difference. So what the government has done, they've pretended that they would take control of borders, created what they pretended was a skilled worker system, a points-based system, but they've set the number of points and the skills so low that it's actually an open boredom system. And what that's done, of course, is mean that businesses have no need to invest in training apprenticeships or British students, young people, great people, coming out of college, out, coming out of school, as I say, with apprenticeships and things. No, no, they don't need to bother with that because they still want to import cheap, low-skilled overseas labour. And, of course, if you increase the supply, what happens to the price of that labour? It either stays low or, in relative terms, in real terms, it goes down. So there we are. We've got open borders because big business wants more and more people to come into the UK, and yet we've got 5.2 million people, British people, on out-of-work benefits. Many of them trapped, because, of course, on benefits you don't get taxed, and benefits have been increased by the rate of inflation, but those in work are being taxed more. So, therefore, the relative benefit of going to work is reducing. It's truly and utterly extraordinary. We thought we'd taken back control voting for Brexit of our borders. We really did. We thought we were taking back control of our laws and our money. Well, in my second sermon, I will confirm just how that actually hasn't worked out. And on borders, it's gone. This government doesn't want to have a sensible, lawful, legal immigration system. No, it wants open borders. So my question to you this Sunday is, has Brexit been betrayed? For me, I think that it's been betrayed at almost every single level. The technocrats have taken over, led of course ably by Jeremy Hunt and assisted by the Prime Minister. That feels the wrong way around, doesn't it? That the Chancellor seems to be leading the Prime Minister. But I almost think that's what's happened. How did this happen? Who invited, who elected Jeremy Hunt to run the country, to betray Brexit, to offer a sort of Swiss-style uh, approach to our relations with the EU? This has all happened under the watch of this Conservative government, with a huge majority elected to do Brexit, and I think elected to do it properly. If you're going to do a job, for heaven's sake, do it properly or don't bother doing it at all. But sure enough, I think we've betrayed, been betrayed. But call me, 0344 499 1000, or message me with you think what you think. Have we been betrayed? Have we been let down? Or maybe you're OK with all of this. Let me know. And with that, here endeth my Sunday sermon. <laughs>